So before I, you know, my colleague told me before I gave a bad talk, I need to apologize first. So this actually is a bit unusual talk because I'm used to tell you all the tiny, billy, you know, details. So, you know, um, Ramesh told me I have to give a high level talk, a general talk to the general audience. So, um, so it's a bit of different. So if you feel like a more like a pitch to the VC, you know, it's because I'm really, really not good at giving high level talks. And also because I'm doing system level research and for system level research business, and there, there's no fancy graphs, no fancy demo. So that's why, you know, probably it's gonna be a really boring talk before the end of the, especially it's big, at the end of the day. So having said that, since I've already lowered your expectation, so I'll start with the basically is really the, what is the ten what are the ten strategic technology in two thousand in next year? So as you notice here, the uh, the first one is still cloud computing, and for next year is still going to be cloud computing. And you have seen actually the multi application has moved up from number ten to number two uh, second. And of course, there's a whole lot of things about the social and analytics and the social network, okay? And uh, hopefully, actually, the next year, I'll be, be able to give a much, much more interesting talk about the social networks. So that's why, actually, the, that's basically the topic for my talk is really about from mobile to cloud app uh, computing. So I, I really see actually cloud actually really enables more mobile applications because cloud actually acts as a really a backstore for mobile phones to for both storage. You don't really need to store a whole lot of data in the flash memory or solid state disk in your mobile phone. And also the second thing is really computation power. For example, for face recognition, you can really actually do a whole lot of those kind of complicated algorithm running on the clouds, and then your mobile phones really act as a client, as a just basically to try to display the results. So I think that this somehow this trends magically come together, you know, basically the mobile, the smartphones, and the cloud computing magically come to together and make a whole lot of actual computation power in our, really in our handheld, in our hand. So what is cloud computing? I think people, different people have different definitions. Some people think it's a utility computing. Some people think it's basically greedy computing. So what it really is actually is, you know, it offers, uh, cloud computing offers the ability to access services, software, or information or data that can be delivered on demand and over the internet and without the need to store locally for example, in your smartphone. So what are the benefits of a cloud environment? So the first thing come to my mind is basically really fast for deployment. I'm gonna show you a couple examples. So actually some of the business people who do not have a computer science degree be able to deploy things very quickly in Amazon's clouds. And the second thing is to pay for only for what you use. You don't need, especially for startup, you really don't need to set up a big data center. You can actually rent uh, basically from uh, Amazon. For example, if you guys, how many guys use a Twitter? No, not much, okay. So if you use a Twitter, actually Twitter is deployed actually in Amazon's cloud. And so then actually gradually, once you're big enough, you can start to afford to build your own data center. And of course, there's a whole other things, such as less in-house IT staff and reduced cost and all those other sort of advantages. So there are, what are the commercial clouds? These are called public clouds. Of course, for enterprise like if Citibank, they're gonna use their own cloud called private clouds. So for the public clouds, I think basically for Amazon, there's the provider S3, which basically allow you to store data and then for computing, they provide EC2. So allow you to actually deploy your application, you, basically your computation on top of their in, uh, infrastructure, their data center. And for Google, I think they basically, it's mostly it's actually a Google app engine, I'll basically allow you to do, host the application. They also provide their own application such as Google Doc. So this actual Google Doc is built on top of the Google app engine. So, 
Well, who actually is using the clouds? So there are so many buzzwords about the clouds who actually deploy things, on, especially on the public clouds. So just to give you an example, this actually the uh, New York Times, they actually have, uh, the, so the business people, you know, since actually it's really useful if there's a time, uh, basically times machine. So you can go to the New York Times to, to, for the archive to check, to read all the old uh, news articles. So I think the business people check with the IT staff in, in their company, and the IT staff gave them an uh, estimation, probably take three to six months to deploy it. As you know, basically doing business, the time to market is really, really important. And um, fortunately, actually, Amazon has uh, already provided this cloud service. So some of those business people, they actually, they get together on the weekends. They actually pull it off just for over the weekend for $50. And so this is just to show, to show you, actually, that really is the advantage of uh, using clouds. So another example is, uh, is actually a pharmaceutical company because I noticed that maybe some of the audience actually relate to health. So this is, is a, actually not a small public pharmaceutical company. So they actually moved the entire R&D environment to the clouds. And so as you can see here, so to basically deploy a new server, you don't need actually eight, uh, seven or eight weeks. You just need three minutes to get a, a server. And also to actually build a cluster of 64 nodes, you just need five minutes. Uh, you reduce it from 12 weeks to five minutes. And of course, I think with the mobile phone, so we have basically there's you know, mobile TV and the mobile banking, and actually all the computation, actually, actually the, all the data actually stored in, in the cloud. So what you see here is actually really the mobile phones really act as an interface to whatever the computation or the storage um, available in the clouds. But there are issues and concerns. So this is actually a, uh, based a report from IDC. As, uh, they did a survey to check what are the major concerns from you know, users to migrate to clouds. So the number one Basic concern is the security. So one of the professors here, actually Stefan Savage, has done research that they're actually able to attack um, the, Amazon, the Amazon cloud. And of course, they got Amazon really, really pissed off uh, by the research. So I think he, the funny thing is actually he always acted as a bad guy to try to attack the things. And our group has always acted as a good guy to try to prevent security attacks. So we have a lot of debate going on to basically about security. And the second concern is availability. The system needs to be really, really available. I'm actually gonna zoom in to this availability a little bit um, um, in the next slides. And the third thing is, of course, is a performance. And then to deliver performance is much more challenge because you not only have this network, like a wireless network of performance, and you also have uh, basically the system level kind of performance challenges. So there are, of course, there are some other slides, uh, actual challenges such as there's still no standard yet. So portability for the clouds is a really, really challenging issue. And I think for right now, basically with the clouds, one of the enabling technologies is virtualization. But the virtualization actually, you know, on one hand it makes it easier because you don't need to worry about the hardware, you don't need to worry about, the, about the maintenance, and you can scale on demand. But the challenge is virtualization actually make it transparent. So I have no idea what it, where my application is running. I have no idea what else is running on that platform. And also virtualization is not 100% because of how you virtualize the performance and how you virtualize the reliability. Maybe I think I have a, a like virtual machine, like VM or virtual machine, I think I have the Linux, I have the entire machine to myself, but the performance is actually, you will notice it's still different from running on a single physical machine. And also complexity. The second thing is um, complexity. Because the, tradition, the distributed system is really, really hard enough Right now, you try to scale to 5,000 nodes or 6,000 nodes, 
And uh, where in this kind of environment, the component failure is just a fact of life. So I think uh, usually Google says it's uh, on every second, they expect the 10 machines to fail at any second. So you have to, in your design, you have to basically be able to actually um, dealing with this kind of failure. So you have to design fault tolerance in your entire system from get-go. And also the, uh, make things even harder is the transparency because uh, you really you don't have any control and you don't know what's going on in the infrastructure. And the third thing is elasticity. So one of the basic you know, word with the cloud is basically you can scale up and scale down. But right now, actually, how are you gonna test whether your application you know, has elasticity and it works? So there's a whole lot of actually you know, development or testing or diagnosis framework you need to support this. Of course, the last one is interference by other applications. Just to give you some real world bug example, so this is the Win Windows Azure, basically is the actually equivalent to VMware. So there is a, it's basically a kind of a virtual machine, is a framework for cloud. And they had actually a bigger, um, basically sort of downtime uh, last year for several hours, because it's actually a minor bug in one of the actually sim simple components. So the, this takes a long time for diagnosis because it diagnoses this problem because when something fails, you don't know who is at fault. Is it the application or is it the infrastructure? And even in the infrastructure, you don't know whether it's a network, is it a storage system, is it the server, or is it, the, basically, is it basically any kind of components in that infrastructure. And uh, of course you feel, okay, if things fail, it's not that bad, I can wait. Not all the application, you know, basically requires 24 seven kind of availability. But the, the another actual downsides of bugs is really security and privacy. So this actually basically is just a news article shows actually a Google bug can make your private data actually go, you know, become public. You probably, you expect your Google doc to be private, but uh, there's a, some kind of glitches or bugs in the, in the Google software, it make you basically all your Google doc actually be, become public. This actually encounters a similar thing in Facebook because when I first registered a Facebook account, I put in my birthday. But then immediately, probably within 10 minutes, I realized I should not put the birthday there, so I deleted the birthday. But I think they actually have a bug. So because of this year, magically, some, some of my friends actually sent me a happy birthday email. I was surprised. They're not supposed to know this is my birthday. So then I contact Facebook and the acknowledge it is a bug. Okay, because once I enter, even, then I change it back, there's a bug actually to be, not to be able to um, make that actual change in all the places. So this is basically is just shows actually, bugs is all frequently associated with the privacy and with the security. So you think what is the big deal, right? So this actually shows that on average, a bug actually can easily cost about a quarter million and it requires 20 developer hours to correct it just ignore the actual lawsuit um, uh, because of uh, you know, privacy confidential information leak. So what I really needed uh, actually is uh, you, know, you need to do uh, some kind of training developers to think cloud and the testing framework, monitoring, diagnostic support, and the po also basically portability to other clouds. So this is actually the only sort of shameless advertisement about our research. Is, uh, our research focus mostly is actually in this kind of application monitoring diagnostic support, and the testing framework. So for monitoring, it's a, basically you need to monitor resource utilization, and monitor events, and then notice that there's a, basically some kind of security attack, and also identify failures. Um, I guess, I don't know how much time I have. Okay, sure. So for diagnosing uh, diagnose actual application, the biggest challenge is actually photo uh, localization. So I've talked with the MasterCard. So for them, actually, whenever they have some issues, it's always actually they have get multiple teams together because they don't know whether it's a network problem or it's a system problem or it's a storage problem. So this actually is the biggest challenge. Right now, if you put it in the clouds, um, the application basically is actually people don't own the infrastructure. 
So this makes the diagnosis actually really, really hard. So this actually would require the vendors to work together to gather more diagnostic information and also require more actually sophisticated data analytics to do based on, you know, automatic diagnosis. So I think we actually quite done quite a bit of work. Uh, I will not go into details. So some of actual works actually has been frequently, you know, pushed, uh, requested by, you know, industry company like EMC, Cisco, Huawei, NetApp, or Google, all those kind of companies. Because for them, really actually doing troubleshooting, uh, doing diagnosis is really, really uh, painful for them. So of course, uh, uh, yeah, I'll skip all this. So to conclude, I think actually this is, I don't know if you'd be able to read this. Um, so I think in the very beginning, this is just a shows the maturity level of the clouds. So in the very beginning, it's basically so you, people will say, I need a, still need a lot of convincing. And then basically then to the point it says it looks promising. And then, then you say, I, I think we can have a go until the point uh, you feel so proud that you're one of the early adopters. And then at the end they say, why it's so mainstream now, you know, everybody's using cloud. But in order to move from this position to the mainstream, you notice basically there's a whole lot of work needs to be done. And um, uh, in particular, basically you move from looks promising to the point I think we can have a go. You really need basically is a, like a, you know, things to do monitoring, things to do basically be portable and the things to be able to actually do run and test uh, these services in your house. So this is just, I think, is, we still have a quite a bit of path, uh, you know, to the cl cloud computing become mainstream. So I have said that, based on ending my talk.